Welcome back, and uh, there's two topics tonight. The first one is the one I began and just sort of got into a little bit at the beginning, at the end of last time, and so I'll pick up on that. That's this thing about the birth of algebra, which is part of a general sort of historical theme that's going to be running through this. But I'm also interspersing it with sort of more up-to-date things, and given the events in the political arena, the second half is going to be about how do we count the votes in a general election, okay? And the spoiler is... You tell me who you want to win, and I can give you a fair way to count the votes that that person will win. Yeah. Okay? So, you know, it's, it's not who wins. Well, it actually, it could be who wins the debate that can really get into the White House, but really the game is won or lost when you decide how you're going to count the votes. So that would be the second half. Okay, I'll go a little bit, I'll go fairly quickly for the first couple of minutes because we, we got into this last time. And this is about the birth of algebra. And I pointed out that we need to be careful what we mean by algebra. In fact, even today, there are two meanings. There's what I'd call uh, sophisticated arithmetical thinking uh, or meta-arithmetical thinking, which is, the, the kind of, which is what most people think of as algebra. It's what's the basis of algebra in the high school system. And then there's what mathematicians call algebra, sometimes known as higher algebra. <coughs> okay, well, first of all, and, and the focus mainly is going to be almost exclusively is on the former which is algebra as it arose out of arithmetic, as a, as a way of improving uh, arithmetic calculations. So I'm not going to be touching on higher algebra, which is what is done. So if you see that, if you, come, you, go around the Stanford, you go around the Stanford campus, you go in the math department, and you go into an office, and someone says, this is Professor X, and Professor X is an algebraist, this is not what Professor X does. Professor X does something very different, perhaps works on something like Fermat's last theorem although that turned out not to be algebraic in the end, but that's another story. Okay, uh, certainly not algebra because it uses symbols. In fact, algebra for many years was written in a non-symbolic fashion. It was always done symbolically. Uh, by the way, I, I will mention that if you start going on the web and you go to even to Wikipedia and you look for uh, accounts on algebra, there's a lot of misinformation floating out there. It's one of the... Wikipedia is actually pretty good on a lot of mathematical content. <laughs> But the last time I looked in terms of the history of algebra, um, it was really very weak, largely because it was based on the few textbooks that are available uh, that people have access to, most of which are actually quite old, and scholarship has, has advanced quite a bit since then. <coughs> okay, so this is one of those instances where beware of what you find on the web. Okay, but it's certainly, so it, it, it's not because it's symbolic uh, that makes it algebra. It's the, it's the kind of thinking that's going on. <laughs> um, and in fact, the symbolic part, uh, although you can trace it back to these fairly early origins, uh, it really wasn't until even later than the 13th century that, uh, that we get modern symbolic algebra. In fact, 16th century is when you can first really identify, in the work of Francois Viette, Viette you, can, you can really recognize symbolic algebra in, in the modern sense. Okay, so um, the key distinction is it's a, it's a logical thinking rather than numerical quantitative thinking. Um, it's not calculating with numbers, it's reasoning logically about numbers. Uh, so whereas arithmetic is definitely quantitative, algebra is very much a qualitative uh, discipline, but it's focused on numbers. This kind of algebra is still focused on numbers. And one of the ways to distinguish it is whereas in calculation you have some data and you do things to that data to get an answer. You calculate with the data. You add numbers together, you multiply them, and it's a forward-looking thing where you're combining things. You're literally not getting new information. You're combining information you've got in order to get a result that was already implicit in that data. Um, one of the features of algebra is it's a little bit different. You know that there's an answer out there. You give it a name. And then you sort of almost work backwards. You reason what would have to happen to get to that thing. So you reason logically in order to, to determine that value. Um, now, it doesn't matter whether you call that an unknown by a name. And in fact, in medieval mathematics, it was used by terms that really meant the thing. You do this to the thing, you do that to the thing, and then you find out that the thing is this. Um, so there were various terms in Latin and other languages which really translate as the thing. Um, and it only became known as the X. Solving for X 
was, was more like 16th, 17th century. So it's not to do with the language. You know, my analogy with, with music, music uh, is, transcends the, the musical notation. And algebra transcends any particular notation. It's the way of thinking that distinguishes it. <laughs> so my, one of the things I mentioned last time was that taking a formula and putting numbers in is, is outright arithmetic. Um, but the deriving of that formula in the first place in, usually involves qualitative and what we might call algebraic reasoning. And the examples I gave again last time very quickly was solving a quadratic by guessing and calculation. That's just doing arithmetic. You make a guess and then you do some calculation. If you're systematic and you substitute in a formula, that's also arithmetic. But if you look at the, uh, the method whereby the formula itself is obtained, or in the case of a particular example like this, uh, looking at the structure of it and reasoning about it, then that's really, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a fuzzy borderline. And some people might disagree with my classifying this as algebraic because it is a fuzzy borderline. But I would say, when you start doing this, you've really crossed over into, uh, into algebraic thinking. As I say, it's fuzzy, and, and you know, different people might want to put the borderline in a different place. So I would say that's, 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 trust, that, that's moved over, and that's, that's really algebra. Stanford University.